Welcome back to the Knowledge Catalog. This is still uh, Grade 9 Chemistry and we are still going to work on the first learning competency. Uh, actually, the second learning competency. Okay, so it is explaining how the quantum mechanical model of the atom describes the energies and positions of the electrons. Uh, you, if you want to follow through with the reading material with the Science 9 Learners module, you may open it in Unit 2, Module 1, pages uh, 11 to 14. As usual, this video is divided into the following parts. The first part is a discussion about uh, de Broglie, Schrodinger, and Heisenberg, and the quantum mechanical model of the atom. And then the second part is a discussion about the principal energy levels and sublevels of electrons. And the, la the last part is a discussion about orbitals. So I hope that you are ready for uh, some theoretical uh, work. Okay, so we begin with the first discussion. Okay, so. Um, we begin uh, this discussion by uh, mentioning or by pointing out that the uh, you know the the atomic model that was proposed by Niels Bohr is not accepted. Okay, it's, it's generally unacceptable because um, of the imp of the impossibility to find an electron that is in a specific orbit. Okay, around the nucleus. So this model is not going to work. It is not going to be able to uh, explain how uh, an atom works, how it behaves, how electrons uh, behave. Okay, so with that, uh, the following uh, scientists, uh, be to begin with Louis, Louis de Broglie, uh, worked on an improved uh, version, and an improved uh, atomic model. Uh, Louis de Broglie proposed that the electron, which was previously thought of as a particle, could also be thought of as a wave. So instead of just thinking, um, of uh, electron as a form of uh, matter, we can also still think of it as a form of energy, in this case a wave, which has a direction. And then the, it was closely followed by an, another scientist uh, who was named Erwin Schrödinger, uh, who used uh, that idea to develop a, mechanic, a mathematical equation to describe the hydrogen atom, uh, wherein the electron is going to behave as a wave. And then lastly, Werner Carl Heisenberg discovered that it is impossible to know the exact location of an electron at a given time. So it was thus, uh, it was affixed to his name. Uh, Yung uncertainty principle was affixed to his name. And the work of these three led to the quantum mechanical model, which is basically an electron cloud with an obvious uh, nucleus. And then uh, there are only different colors that signify uh, different regions of the atom, such as this is the entire atom, okay, and then this nucleus right here is where you'll find most of the positive charge and the neutral charge, and then this is just a cloud of uh, negatively charged particles, and that the electrons here are in constant motion. So these scientists believe that there is only a probability that the electron can be found in a certain volume in space around the nucleus. So you can't really point it out if the electron is really uh, moving uh, with respect to an orbit, but uh, we can we can conclude. Okay, we can say that the electron is moving around a particular space. So again, not an orbit, but a particular uh, region, a particular space. Okay, so this volume or region of space around the nucleus where the electron is most likely to be found is called an atomic orbital. Okay, so iba yung orbit, iba yung orbital. Tiyatawag natin. An orbital is a region of space. Okay? It's a volume of space. Thus, we can only guess the most probable location of the electron at a certain time to be within a certain volume of space surrounding the nucleus. Continuing, um, these are the different orbitals for the different uh, sublevels. So we have here an S to be spherical, and then P looks like a dumbbell, okay? And then uh, as we get to a D and F, that dumbbell becomes more complicated. The quantum mechanical model views an electron as a cloud of negative charge having a certain geometrical shape. So the uh, orbital, the S orbital right here, is a, it is a spherical orbital. So ibig sabihin nun, um, kung nasa gitna ng sphere yung nucleus, um, it doesn't matter, okay, it doesn't matter kung saang direction uh, ka tumuho or tumingin, in any direction, it is going to be just a uniform uh, space between the nucleus and the end of the orbital. Uh, this model shows how likely an electron to be found in various locations around the nucleus. 
However, the model, so this qu the quantum mechanical model that is being flashed right here, or the orbitals that are being flashed right here, they can uh, really, uh, you know, uh, give us information on how uh, the electrons move from one position to another. They can only show um, their locations, but not how they move from one location to another. So that's the first part of the discussion. And I hope that with this discussion, we were able to describe to you that uh, or we, we were able to uh, ano, to conclude na ikaw at andaan mo that the, uh, that the model of the atom that we are using today is called the quantum mechanical model of the atom. The next part is a, dis is a discussion about the principal energy levels and sublevels of the electron. So this is a table. And as you can see, each column is uh, being uh, headed by the, the by the following. The first column, these are the energy levels. So these are the principal energy levels. We have one, two, three, four, and the fifth energy level. And then uh, for the second column, there is this number of sublevels. So for the first uh, energy level, you only have one sublevel. For the second energy level, you have two sublevels. The only sublevel you'll find in principal energy number one is one s, and the two uh, sublevels you will find in principal energy level number two are two s and two p, uh, which you, in which you have one orbital and you have three orbitals. Uh, remember, for every one orbital, you can actually accommodate uh, two electrons in them, and then for three orbitals, you can it can accommodate six electrons. Uh, if you hear a background noise, just don't mind it. Okay, I will try my best to edit that out. <laughs> uh, pero, you know, um, delivering this lesson kasi fluidly is very important. Um, so I hope that you are still hanging around. You're still listening. I, and also, I hope that uh, this is also uh, something uh, you will uh, take notice of. Kasi um, there's a possibility for principal energy levels to be as high as 5. Okay, and then the number of sublevels that you, you will find in the fifth energy level will be uh, five and uh, using it in SPDF lang, it will now be SPDF and G. All right, so the na the maximum number of electrons that uh, you know the fifth energy level can accommodate will now become fifty. The principal quantum number always equals the number of sublevels with that principal energy level, as it is made obvious by this. So, uh, yun, yung principal energy level kailangan equal yung number na yon dun sa number ng sublevel sa so makikita mo don. The maximum number of electrons that can occupy a principal energy level is given by the formula 2n squared, where n is the principal quantum number. So let us try that out. Halimbawa, um, you know, if n is equal to 4, again, so n is equal to 4, so 2 times n, I know, uh, no, n squared, 4, so that is like 16 times 2, that's 32. So yeah, the maximum number of electrons you find in the fourth energy level will be 32. Now let's try it out with 5. So 5 times 5 is 25 times 2, that's 50. So the maximum number of electrons you will find for the 5th energy level is going to be 50. And so you may try it out with the 3rd, 2nd, and the 1st energy level. You will find the same uh, answers. That's the same numbers here in the maximum number of electrons in the last column. Okay, um, for the last part of this uh, video, we have a discussion about orbitals. So yeah, orbitals are uh, the following. Um, first again, is a spherical, uh, is a spherical s orbital, and then we have here the oriented um, p orbitals, the the d orbitals, and then we have here the f orbitals. Yeah, so orbitals have specific energy values. They have shapes and directions in space. Um, the s orbitals are spherical and p orbitals are dumbbell shaped. So going back to this illustration, nakikita niyo yung orientation x y zina siya sa So x orbit, the x orientation is this one right here. The y orientation is right there, and then the z orientation is right there. Uh, so uh, itong p zero is oriented with the z, and then itong c uh, p negative one is oriented with the x, and then itong p uh, sub one uh, is oriented with the y. So, yun yung ibig sabihin natin dyan. Okay, so, um, there is a direction. Okay, aside from the shape um, of the, I mean, uh, of the orbital, meron din siyang direction. The S orbitals are spherical and they are like uh, dumbbells, as I've been mentioning. Because of the spherical shape of uh, the S orbital, the probability of finding an electron at a given distance from the nucleus in an S orbital does not depend on direction. Pare-pareho lang yun. Kasi, uh, sphere siya <laughs> 
Okay, so unlike the three kinds of p orbitals, which are oriented along the x, y, and z axis, so they differ in orientations, such as in uh, p x, p y, and p z. Right, so the shapes of the other orbitals, such as d and f, were derived from a complex calculation, and we are not going to discuss them in this uh, series. Uh, we are not going to include that discussion in this series. In an atom, electrons and the nucleus interact to make the most stable arrangement possible. So uh, they are in a con constant interaction. So electrons are in a constant movement because uh, they want to have the best orientation, the best arrangement possible. So the way in which electrons are distributed, distributed in the different orbitals around the nucleus of an atom is called the electron configuration. Right, so the electron configuration of, say, for instance, uh, beryllium, right, the, um, you know, in this case, beryllium has, uh, okay, 1s, 2, okay, um, I would like you to, uh, to, to take a look at this. I just spotted the error right now. But yeah, there is an error. Okay, tell me what is the error. Well, for hydrogen, it's right. Uh, we have we only have one, uh, one, uh, one upward, uh, going electron, and thus the electron configuration is one. For helium, how many how many electrons are supposed to be in helium? Yeah, there are supposed to be two only. So this one right here must not be, uh, you know, must be. Uh, yeah, it must be removed. So this now will be correcting the uh, table. How about for beryllium? So we have an upward, an upward, and then a downward, and then this downward right here is going to be removed as well. Why is that so? Because um, when it comes to filling up of orbitals, kailangan muna natin unahin talaga yung mga upward moving na mga electrons. So and ba, for lithium, upward, upward, and then downward, downward. And then for beryllium, we have upward, three upwards, and then two downwards. So yeah, dito tama na yata siya. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So the electron configuration is going to be as follows. So for um, for helium, it's going to be 1s2. And then for beryllium, it's going to be 1s2, 2s1. And then for lithium, it's going to fill it up like, you know, one more electron. Because remember, an s orbital will, will can accommodate uh, two electrons. Um, there is no such thing, okay, Wal walang 1s3, walang 1s4, because um, kaya lang talaga yung accommodate ng ss2. So we have here, uh, for the for boron, we have uh, 1s2, 2s2, and uh, 2px sub uh, 1, okay, so 2px1. And for carbon, it will be 2py1, and then for nitrogen, it will be 2pz1. And after na fill na nung pi, yung ano, after ma fill nung pinaka last na p orbital, okay, so ang ang next na mangyari is uh, ma fill naman through oxygen, uh, one more ano, one more uh, one new electron when we move to oxygen yung px, so next is py and then last yung uh, pz2 and so ganon siya. Also, uh, I hope that you remember your uh, classes in grade 8. Uh, we did, uh, you did, you were supposed to do, okay? Uh, you were supposed to do uh, several exercises on electronic, on electronic configuration. So in grade 9, we're no longer going to rediscuss that. Okay? So we're just going to mention it just like this. And this table shows the orbitals and electronic configuration of the first 10 elements in the modern periodic table. So we have here hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, uh, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Hydrogen, helium, uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. Yeah, but ito mali siya, no? Okay, so, okay, so thank you for pointing that out. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium. So, nagkapalit ko sila. Okay. Lithium and beryllium. So, can we leave this uh, slide now? I hope na, okay, everything, or we got everything covered. Okay, so I hope that we got everything covered. Are you sure? Wala nang error ito? Okay, so if you're sure, let us now call this, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, video, uh, let us put an end <laughs> to this uh, video, a formal end. So remember that uh, we already are done with the first learning competency and that with this uh, video, we were able to discuss 
uh, something that will be uh, used uh, to further our uh, mastery of the second learning competency, which is to be able to explain how the quantum mechanical model of the atom describes the energies and positions of electrons. Now, if you follow through with your learner's module, that's well and good. Hi, so I hope that I will be seeing you in the next uh, video lesson. Uh, this has been uh, Sir CJ, uh, and I hope that uh, you were learning so far something in the introduction for uh, grade 9 chemistry. See you.